Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about the future of pickup trucks. There's a company now called Rivian Automotive. They've had various names, but their CEO has a doctorate from MIT. So the guy's no slouch there. Ended up in Michigan in 2015 to be closer to their suppliers. And now they're working on only electric vehicles. Now in 2017, Rivian bought an old Mitsubishi factory in Normal, Illinois, where they're going to be building these electric vehicles. Now there's some money behind these guys. In 2017, Sumitomo, a big Japanese company, put an undisclosed amount of money into them to give them capital to start building stuff. One was an electric five passenger pickup truck and the other was a seven passenger SUV. Popular things, pickup truck and SUV. Well this obviously impressed some people because in 2019 Amazon invested 700 million dollars into this electric car company. And then again in 2019 Ford Motor Company threw in another 500 million. Now the electric pickup actual production is scheduled for the year 2020. Now Amazon's no fool of a company. Bezos seems to know how to print money out. And Ford Motor Company, it's a smart move for them because really, they know pickup trucks. Hey, they're not an electric company. So it could be relatively easy for Ford to take the Rivian electric base and then slap a Ford pickup truck on top of it. As the saying goes, why reinvent the wheel? If you got a company that's building a good electric pickup truck base and Ford adds all their stuff on top of it, to me that makes total sense. Now both of the Rivian's vehicles use what's called the skateboard platform. They use the same basic battery. People can put on that skateboard assembly whatever they want. Now this Rivian skateboard design, each wheel has its own motor so it can be controlled independently which means you're not going to get stuck in the mud. <laughs> Each wheel can have active management. If one slips, it can give more power to the other one. Talk about all-wheel drive. If you got a motor at each wheel, you can really control them. Now, they have three versions of battery packs and motors on them. One is 105 kilowatt. One is 135 kilowatts. And the biggest one is 180 kilowatts. It's a lot of power. And the most powerful one has 750 horsepower and 826 foot pounds of torque. I mean, logically, an electric motor for a pickup makes total sense because electric motors have full torque all the time. As soon as you turn them on, all the power comes out. So they'd be great for hauling things in the bed and for towing things. The big old diesel electric trains you see going down the train track, yeah they have diesel engines but they just generate electricity and the electric motors are what drive the trains. And trains certainly can pull an awful lot of stuff like a mile of trains can be pulled by a few engines. There's a lot of power in electric motors for pulling. And I know people are going to say, yeah they got power. But how long do they last? I don't want a pickup truck that can go 80 miles and it runs out of power. Well, the 180 kilowatt hour one is forecasted to have a range of 400 miles. You pull that one off, you're probably going to sell quite a few of these things. And with a forecasted zero to 60 time of acceleration in 3.2 seconds, that's a fast pickup truck. But then I know people are going to say, how long does it take to charge these things up? They claim that they can have a fast DC charger setup that can get an 80% charge in just 15 minutes. Hey, the head of the company did graduate from MIT. It's not the easiest school in the world. And the forecasted payload in the bed is 1,764 pounds. So it can carry quite a bit of weight. And the towing capacity is going to be 11,000 pounds of towing. So it can do some serious towing too. And as an added bonus, they have what they're calling a frunk. It's a trunk in the front. Doesn't have an engine anymore. And there's a 12 cubic foot space where the engine used to be that's now a trunk that you can put stuff in. A frunk. <laughs> now they're planning on having a late 2020 model which they'll probably market as a 2021 vehicle. And not out yet but it sure seems interesting to me. Now if they can really have a fast charger that recharges at 80 percent in 15 minutes that's going to be a big sales point for guys that want a serious pickup truck. But I do have to wonder about one thing. A lot of the weight is below the wheels. Electric batteries weigh a lot. They're really heavy. You got to put the weight somewhere. Yeah, it'll, it'll handle better with it lower. But people buy pickup trucks to drive all over the place 
and take here in Houston where it floods all the time, they're always driving through flood water. If that battery and that electronics is that low. I, for one, wonder, will these things be able to handle water like that or will the electronics short out in them? Because as an example, years ago, Mercedes-Benz tried electronic brakes on their vehicles and they found that the brakes, being at the wheels, were always getting wet and the stupid things were getting corroded by water and a lot of them shorted out and guess what Mercedes did? They said, whoop, nix on that and they stopped making the electric braking systems. So I do wonder how all this electric stuff is gonna be sealed on a pickup truck that guys are gonna take all over the place and hey, if they're driving them through flood water and each wheel is a motor and the battery's low, that eh, makes me kind of wonder. I mean, hey, the Germans made U-boats that were basically diesel electric that were underwater. But then again, that was inside a waterproof hull. <laughs> the inner hull was waterproof. What's gonna happen with an electric pickup truck with all that electronics down so low? Because like anything else, Old Scotty says, hey, wait till something's around a while to see what happens to it. Personally, I wouldn't go jumping out and buying an electric pickup truck only to find that, whoa, you can't drive them in any water at all. Stuff gets shorted out. I personally would wait on it. I find it fascinating technology, but unless I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, some place where you don't have to worry about water intrusion, eh, I might think twice about buying an electric pickup truck. So now you know a little bit more about the future of electronic pickup trucks, and only time will tell. Is it gonna be a success? Is it gonna be a failure? Or is it gonna be something in between? So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.